Hi, I'm Jordan. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm a stay-at-home mom of two kiddos, a five-year-old and a one-year-old, and we are a homeschool family. Every Monday, I release a day in the life video, and every Thursday, I release an additional video, usually about homeschool or the holidays. Today's video is going to be our library haul for the month of May. But before I get into it, please take a moment to like and subscribe. All right, for our library haul for this month, two uh, subjects really dominated when it came to our books. We get books based on or what I think my kids are going to be interested in, but also to help supplement our homeschool. So starting with kind of our first category would be our core knowledge domains. We wrapped up domain eight, which was all about the seasons and weather. And so the final book that just was able to be given to us from the library because we had it on hold was Snowflake Bentley. We read this book already. It was really cute based on a true story. Um, really, really enjoyed it. In the back, you can kind of see more about the true story. And not only that, but along the edges, it tells you the true story as well. So like here, it's like the storybook part. And then on the sides is where it gives you the actual like information. Then we started our next unit, which was all about uh, the Pilgrims and Columbus. We've finished that as well. And so that's just to give you an idea of just how long that that particular book was on hold for. It was a lot of people were using it. I'm not surprised. It's a great book. Um, but now we are into the next domain of core knowledge, which is all about colonial life. So let's take a look at the books that we have for that. National Geographic, Colonial Life, Stone Soup, Stone Soup, If You Lived in Williamsburg in Colonial Days, We've done these books before and normally we break it down because it has so much information. There are some illustrations, but it asks a question and then gives the answers. We really enjoy these. We've done these for other topics as well, like Native Americans and the Pilgrims, and we're able to spread this out over multiple days. If you lived at the time of the American Revolution, this is another one of those books. Home Life in Colonial America, The Emperor's New Clothes, The Emperor's New Clothes, the Emperor's New Clothes, The New Americans, Colonial Times, Charlie Needs a Cloak, The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse, The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse, Town Mouse, Country Mouse, A Horse's Tale, The Elves and the Shoemaker, The Elves and the Shoemaker, Oxcart Man. I love this book. I can't tell you what it is about it exactly. It's just, it's so nicely written and, and it feels so, just like, right, but like, just because of where it starts at the beginning and we kind of go, come full circle in it and just the way that they explain everything and the illustrations, it just, I don't know. There's something about it that I just find very soothing. I really like it. <laughs> colonial families, colonial homes, colonial farms, Colonial Food, Colonial Jobs. And the final book that we have here called Colonial Kids, An Activity Guide to Life in the New World. We have used a similar book to this um, where it just had tons of activities. We're not gonna be doing all the activities that are in this. We might do one or two, but it also has a lot of really good text. That said, it is very dense. I don't think we're gonna get to nearly half of this. It's just gonna be something that we can use kind of as a reference. These next set of books all go with our bug morning basket. We have been doing a unit study, um, the Waldock Ways Mini Beast Unit, pretty much this whole year as a way to start our morning. It's the topic that my son picked that was his special interest, and we are kind of getting to the end of it, but these are the books that we got to go along with that. Are you a centipede? Centipedes? Centipedes? Centipedes 100 Shoes? Escargot? A Book for Escargot, Love Escargot, Escargot and the Search for Spring. Are you a snail? Snail and Worm. These are really cute. They only have three short stories in them and they're like very simple little stories. Really cute. My son really enjoys these. They make him laugh quite a bit. Snail and Worm again. Snail and Worm, of course. Snails, Snaily Snails. Slug Needs a Hug. Norman, the slug with the silly shell. The slug. My almost two-year-old has become obsessed with this book. 
I think it's so funny. It's very simple, but it's very factual. Um, right, there's not too much on a page, but it all is just giving information about slugs. Like it's not, this isn't a storybook. This is an informational book. So I think it's really cute that she likes it so much. <laughs> Some smug slug. This one ended up to be a hidden gem. I, in the future, want to think of this if you are trying to work on alliteration, maybe with some of your older kiddos. This is a great book. The whole thing has the letter S throughout, like tons of it throughout the whole thing. Not only that, but at the very end, they tell you the author says an, an S has been hidden on every page. So it became then like a game of hide and seek or I spy. My kiddo loved it. This is a great book. <laughs> it's a good thing there are earthworms, yucky worms. Do you know leeches? Blood sucking leeches. And then these two books came as a recommendation from my stepmom, who's always on the lookout for things that we could read together. Uh, we have Twig and The Rescuer of Tiny Creatures. We read this one this morning. It is such a cute story. We absolutely loved it. Finally, for our bugs, we have our final. A novel to go with our bug study, Charlotte's Web. So I, I anticipate that we are gonna be able to finish up in the next few weeks. So this might even take us kind of past <laughs> our bug basket time, but I, I'm really excited to read this with my kiddo. It's a classic and then afterwards, because there's a movie that goes with it, we'll be able to have a family movie night, which is always a really big hit in my house. I have a couple of books here that went kind of with what I did in my last video where my librarians put out a suggestion of good books to read all about hats. So we have Not My Hats, Rainbow Hat, and finally, I Want My Hat Back. I forgot about this book and I am so glad it was on that list that I could check it out from the library. When I was in grad school, one of my professors uh, showed us this book and said it was a really great way to teach kids about inferences and making inferences um, just based on what's going on <laughs> in the story and I have to agree and it's so so funny so um, even your older kiddos would get a kick out of this book because it is so hilarious and I think if I remember correctly this author has a couple of books like this so now I know I get to go back <laughs> and look and try to check out as many of his books as I can. The final two books that I have here are um, things that my son is super into right now, which is How to Train Your Dragon. We have the fourth book in the series, How to Train Your Dragon, How to Treat, How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse. Uh, this is the one we're currently reading. We read one chapter of this as one of his three books before bed right now. And then we went ahead and got the next one in the series too, because we read through them so fast. Book five, How to Twist a Dragon's Tail. So those are all the books that we got from the library this month in the month of May. Uh, if you have any other suggestions of books that you think my kiddo would love, please let me know in the comments down below. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos from me, subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.